Today, we need to find a new place to replace our usual imaging spot because we just moved to the other side of Las Vegas. Once that's done, it will be time to image our last nebula for a while, and it's a pretty faint one. Will this new location be permanent? Hmm, there was some scary stuff around, but it will all depend on what happens during the night. Hey, what's up guys? So today I'm going to head out alone because Delia has to work in the morning tomorrow pretty early. But um, I'm gonna head out and try to find a new spot because we just moved out to a different side of town. So I have to find a new regular spot that's hopefully bottle 3 slash 4, hopefully within an hour drive from our home. So tonight I plan to image most likely the last nebula before summer and for that I'm gonna use the mid 70mm one last time before uh, summer because then it's gonna be galaxy season so this is too small for galaxies. I'm gonna head out right now and uh, hopefully we can find a spot that's nice. Yep, let's go. So we need to find a place that is wide open, is bottle 4 or better, and is less than one hour away from home. This is where I decided to stop today. It's a bit too close to the highway for my taste, and the bit of road that goes towards this open area is pretty rough. But let's try it out for tonight and see how it goes. It's a bottle 4 zone, and the only polluted part of the sky is to the south, where Las Vegas is located. I installed the small mid telescope, which always looks so dumb when attached to the Atlas CQG. It looks like it doesn't belong there on top of this big boy, but hey, it does the job. I know I probably don't need guiding at this focal lens, but I don't want to risk it, so I always use my guider. Tonight, I'll be using our ASI 1600 monochrome camera with my narrowband filters. And I'm going to image what is likely to be the last nebula until summer, the jellyfish. Today I'm going to try IC443, which is the jellyfish nebula. Um, I think I'm gonna only have three hours before it's too low in the horizon, so I hope it's enough. But I will see, so I have a tiny mid here, 70mm, which I love because that's the one I got the uh, heart nebula with. And uh, I'm with a friend today, which I will show you. And look at my scoop. My scope is tiny, super tiny, and here we have a huge, well, rather two scopes, but another mid which is huge. Which one is that? LX850, which is uh, 12 inch. 12 yeah. inch. So the difference is pretty crazy. <sighs> Mine looks puny compared to it. It's funny because it looks like here it's a mess, but then it becomes super tidy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> wow, double rig. Jorge's telescope is also a mid, which was random. This is a fantastic telescope for galaxy imaging, and it has a very long focal length. In short, it's the complete opposite as the one I'm using. He also has a wide Explore Scientific telescope on top of the mid for some wide field views. Then, on top of everything, is the autoguider. So, last time I came out, which was two days ago, I froze to death. I was so cold. So tonight I'm going to try something new, which I want to show you. I bought this thing here. I'm going to try to hook it up to a second battery. And with that, I can hook up this little fan here. Let me show you guys. So if I hook this up to the battery, I can then use the, uh, the plug behind it and turn on the fan, hopefully, and not die tonight. Let's see if it works. Yes. Look at what we just found. Oh, 
Oh no. That was a horse. A horse? Yeah. Oh, that's crazy. I was wondering what happened to that horse. Maybe coyotes, or I don't know. It's strange because only its head was there. I could not find the body. Hmm. Also, there were a bunch of shell cases around it, but that's probably not related. It's what you find in the desert sometimes when you're walking around. Pretty scary stuff. Either way, it's not reassuring. So I got here kind of early. I'm not sure what's gonna happen now because it's still very light outside. So I'm just waiting. Everything is ready already. But um, yeah, I'm not sure if I'm gonna have enough with three hours on the Jellyfish Nebula. I'm not really sure, so, I'm, so I might, you know, just do two nights on it. So maybe come back tomorrow if it's clear enough and um, do it again, you know, because I really want this to be a nice image. So um, yeah, we'll see. I love to just walk towards nowhere like this. Like it's all open here and it's all the desert and I love that. You can just walk anywhere you want. It's pretty nice. I'm really afraid that the cars and trucks driving on the freeway will have a bad impact on my imaging session because of all the headlights. I could have kept going down further, but the dirt road was so rough at the beginning that I stopped there. Also, it doesn't really go up and down, and there would be no way to hide the headlights anyway. Either way, everything is already installed, so wait and see. When it was dark enough, it was time to focus using the button of mask. For this wide field telescope, I always pick Sirius as my focusing star if possible. Then, let's lose a mount to our target, the jellyfish. I usually like to take a 30 second test shot with either the luminance or HA filter to see if I'm correctly centered, then take 5 or 10 second shots to reframe my target. As for the automation, I like to do 20 shots of each narrowband filter as a basis. Then I often end up adding more to the HA near the end if I have time. First time ever, I feel like a king over here. <laughs> I'm warm, I'm good, nice. Sadly, there is such a, a strong uh, blue light at the inverter there, which I'm trying to hide the plastic bag, but um. It was a beautiful night and everything went well. I, as always, was unable to fall asleep, so I had to pack up as soon as the object went below the horizon. Here you can see how rough the dirt road was. It might not seem that bad on camera, but when you have a 12 year old car that has taken so many beatings in the past, you have to cross your fingers that your tires won't explode on every rock. I know it will happen one day, mark my words. Okay, so I'm back home now. And before I take the SD card out of the ASI Air, um, one thing I don't like about the ASI Air is that after a while, this power cable here will just unplug itself so many times. I think in the past three months, um, maybe two or three times, the, this cable unplugged itself while the mount was slewing. And uh, once it unplugs itself, it's just a pain to... because you have to restart the ASI Air and the app, and it's really a pain. So I, I think they fixed it in the Pro version, so I really hope um, I get the Pro version soon because I think um, it's going to be very annoying if it keeps unplugging itself. And uh, yeah, it's just, it's not snug anymore, like it's so easy, like, uh, yeah, it's pretty annoying. All right, so it's time to process our files. So here we have uh, the combined version in SHO, which is a hobo pilot of the Jellyfish Nebula. It's almost five hours. I'm kind of surprised because there is still some noise in there. That's usually five hours, you know, there's not that much noise, but here there is. 
So it's either because of the headlights from the from the freeway or because, uh, I don't know. But either way, I'm gonna try to uh, take care of that anyway in processing. But, um, okay, so I'm not sure what to do here. There is either this one here, so the SHO, which is the hobo pilot combination, or I can instead do the one behind it, which is HSO, which is more towards the red. So I tried both, as you can see, one is very green, which is normal, and one is very red. So I'm not sure which one I'm going to end up doing. Uh, I like both of them. So I think I'm going to start with the, the Hubble one as a, as a base. And um, I might go back to, to Pixel Inside maybe in a couple of days or maybe in a couple of weeks, depending how I feel, uh, to process the, the red version. So the HSO combination. So maybe in a few days I will upload uh, version number two and you guys can tell me which one you prefer. Uh, for now I'm gonna start with the Hubble one and we'll see how it goes. So time to process. Let's go. The processing was pretty difficult actually. This is the result. About 4 hours and 45 minutes using narrowband filters. It still doesn't look good enough for me, but I believe the same amount of time from a bottle 1 zone would have been perfect, or double the time from the same location at bottle 4. Make sure to visit our written post to learn more about this image, and keep an eye out for the HSO version coming out soon. Dahlia and I are going to work on episode 14 now. We'll see you guys next time, and kiss guys. I'm a